I'm Genesis Middleton, and I will be interviewing Furile Baez. Hello, I am Dalja Lewis, and I'll be interviewing Furile. My name is Stephanie Almodovar, and I'll be interviewing Furile Baez. So, when and where were you born? I was born in Santiago de los Caballeros in Dominican Republic, and I was raised right in the border of Haiti and DR in the Jabón. Since you're Haitian and Dominican, was there any controversy growing up? Because I know how some Haitians dislike Dominicans and some Dominicans dislike Haitians. So was that ever a problem coming of age? So in DR, you would never speak of being Haitian. And in Haiti, you'd be like, oh, Dominicans, right. they're so like opposite of woke. But coming to the US, because there was a civil rights movement, there's a space for people of color to be like, this is my history. These are the many nuances of my history. What would be your tip of advice for people who have multiple races but only identify themselves as one? I guess becoming yourself fully is a thing of process. And I wouldn't necessarily be like forcing someone to acknowledge everything they are. You have to come into it on your own terms. And if that means a slow process, then it's a slow process. What was your influence? Like, even as a child, what influenced you to push forward and become an artist? This is cheesy, but it was my mom. <laughs> when I was a little girl, she had this suit that was her favorite suit, and she would wear it to work. And one day, I think I was like three, I took her sewing scissors, and I was like, I'm gonna redesign this oh, favorite yeah. suit, and I cut it up. And instead of being like, you have a whooping coming your way, <laughs> she was like, oh right, let me show you how to sew. Let me show you how to make this better. And that flexibility, that like, you know, I was punished for other things, but for creativity, I was never punished. And she just encouraged it and helped me guide the, you know, my voice. I know that you went to Cooper Union. How was that process for you? So after high school, I didn't think I was gonna be able to pursue art. I would get, you know, art trophy or whatever. But reality hit and they were like, okay, community college, let's go study psychology. Cause at least that was like something that would reveal the inner soul and maybe be more creative. And during one of the electives, a teacher said, there's a free school in New York you should apply to. She didn't say it's like super hard and you probably won't get in. She just said, it's a free school, you should try it out. And because all I was aiming for was like, okay, let's get in here. I did the test and I got in. And that was like how, you know, that determined my fate. Wow, so you went from community college to now one of the top high race art schools. That's crazy, that's my goal right there. Well, that's the thing, so I guess don't put so much pressure on yourself. If I took one thing from that test, from that teacher, it's like, you as you are, as cre are as creative as you need to be. So trust that voice and express it without trying to put on something else. Okay, so what does hair symbolize in your artwork? Hair is something that, as a woman of color and a Dominican girl, little girl, we were taught to think of hair as a social thing, as something that determines how other people see you and how you can negotiate society both high and low. And one of the things right now that is still like pretty taboo is hair on a woman's body. If you see hair on a girl and you're like, whoa, what's happening there? People still judge, but it's just as natural on both bodies and being able to acknowledge that and make that accessible and break those taboos are, you know, a goal of what the work should function as. So is your artwork based like off of social life? It's based on social life. I guess you could say it's feminist. Okay, so why do you use nature and how does your artwork tie in with women? The main reason why I started working with nature was because of how nature is thought of in Spanish. In a lot of Romance languages, um, the feminine is passive. So if you think of a chair, a moon, a mountain, there are things that, because they're feminine, are waiting to be activated. But I grew up with a lot of badass women 
who did not wait to be activated and did not wait for anyone to make their life happen. One creature that defied both parameters was this figure of the ciguapa. And whenever you see a figure with just legs and like nature above, um, it's quoting that. It's referencing ideas around femininity and nature in Romance language, Spanish, Italian, French. Since we're talking about stereotypes and identity, is there a reason why you use African Americans in your artwork? That's a good question. My main impetus for using bodies of color, black bodies of color specifically, is to point out how the black diaspora extends way further than the US. So when we look at black bodies in the context of the United States, we think that's an African-American person. But honestly, in um, the US alone, I guess before the Louisiana Purchase, there were more Africans in the island of Martinique, that tiny little island in the Caribbean, than in the entirety of the US. And then when you think of Brazil, there were many, many, many times more African bodies, people taken in the diaspora there. So I want people to start thinking that the black diaspora is way huger and far more impactful outside the US than it is here. When you're doing your art pieces in your studio, what do you have that in your studio that like helps you think or helps you with the artwork? So I think of my studio as almost like a mad scientist laboratory. And once in there, there's really no limit. So um, if I need to lay the drawing on the floor and sit on it and paint on it like a carpet, or if I need to put it on the wall, there's usually a lot of play that happens. I usually work from like five in the afternoon to five in the morning. I'm a super night owl because it's a time when you have no social media distracting you. No one's gonna call you. No one's gonna do any of that. So I just focus and work straight through the night. How do you come up with your themes for different exhibits? That's an interesting question because I usually don't come up with a theme. It's something that happens over time as a work is made. Well, what inspired you to create this exhibit that's called Love Thy Neighbor? This is a lesson that's been taught to us in the South, Global South, forever. We've learned to love blonde Barbies forever. We've learned to modify ourselves in beauty supply stores and otherwise forever in ways that are not necessarily meant for us or good to us. Um, so maybe that theory of subaltern love, altertarian love, love of other, is something that might apply only to some other people, but we've been practicing that for a while and it hasn't helped us, it hasn't solved our problems. And love thy neighbor with a question mark is what came out, at least question mark for me. Um, to piggyback off what you said before, um, do you use models um, in your artworks? It all depends on the work. So for some of them, I did this series. Have you guys seen the West Indian Day Parade in Brooklyn? What I like about the West Indian Day Parade is that everybody's part of it, and they're all beautiful as they are. And so I had three or four figures that were coming from it, uh, that were participating in the parade, and I did portraits of them. Um, and so that was one case where I used a model. And what I liked and what I wanted to highlight about them is the nuance of their history. When we think of Caribbean, a lot of time we think of people of European and African descent, but there are so many different diasporas in there. There's a huge Asian diaspora. Like in Dominican Republic alone, there are seven Japanese colonies that were established. Really? Weirdly, yes, yeah, see, and most people don't know. So those are parts that we don't acknowledge, but are present in our bodies and our rituals and our cuisine. And so I asked each person, where are you from? Um, who are your grandparents? Where did they come from? And all that is etched back onto their body. So I guess the figure most of the time ends up being like a vessel for all these other narratives. Yeah. So. When you're doing portraits or other paintings relating to the body, how, how do you start off with that? Do you start off sketching? Do you start off just freehand about it? Um, so sometimes it starts with an idea, and other times it starts with a mark on a paper. Um, and most of them start like this, where there's an abstract blur that coalesces into a figure. And in the one behind us, the print of the OBJ women, she um, was already a pre-existing figure. It's a print that's over 150 years old. And over that, 
I added patterns and text. Um, and in something like this, these are two figures that are either in the midst of an embrace or a struggle, um, which kind of fits with the theme of the exhibition, which is love thy neighbor, and what you have to navigate in order to actually love your neighbor and express that.